everyone, and welcome back to KubeCon, Cloud Native Con here in Detroit, Michigan. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with John Ferrier. John, we are in the meat of the conference. It's really in crunch time, day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, and this next guest is running the show at CNCF. <laughs> Uh, OG, been in the community, doing a great job. I'm looking forward to, to this segment. Me too, I'm even wearing, you may notice, I am in my CNCF tee, <laughs> and I actually brought my tee from last Ooh. year, for those of you, <laughs> and the reason I brought it, actually, I want to use this to help introduce our next guest, is the theme last year was Resistance Realized, and I think that KubeCon this year is an illustration of that Resistance Realized. Please welcome Priyanka Sharma to the show. Priyanka, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you this for having me your show, how are you feeling right now? What does it feel like to be here? It's all of our show. I am just another participant, but I am so happy to be here. I think this is our third um, hybrid in-person back event, and the whole ecosystem, we seem to have gotten into the groove now. You know, the first one we did was in yes. LA, where you have that shirt from, then we went to Valencia, Mm -hmm. And now, here in Detroit, I can sense the ease in the attendees. I can sense that it just feels great for yeah. everyone to be here. And, and you guys who were face-to-face -face in LA, but this is really kind of back face-to-face, -face, somewhat normalized, right? Yeah. And so that's a lot of feedback there. What's your reaction? Because the community's changed so much in three yes. years, even two years, even last year. Where do you see it now? Because there's so much more work to do, but it feels like it's just getting started. But also at the same time, it feels like people are celebrating at the same time. Kubernetes yeah. is mainstream, yes. cloud native at scale. Feel like people a are talking about developer, more developers coming on board, more traction, more scale, more interoperability, just a lot of action. What's your thoughts? I think you're absolutely right that we are just getting started. Um, that I have no, I've been part of many open source movements and communities. This is I think this is something special, where yeah. we have our flagship project considered mainstream, but yet so much to be done right over there. I mean, you've, you've seen announcements around more and more vendors coming to support the project in you know, the boring but essential ways that happened, uh, I think, this week, uh, just today, I think. Um, and so Kubernetes continues to garner support and energy, which is unique in the ecosystem, right? Because once something becomes mainstream, normally it's like, okay, boring. Um, <laughs> but that's happening, and I think the reason for that is cloud native is built upon Kubernetes and so much more than Kubernetes. We have 140 Absolutely. plus projects, and folks have a choice to contribute to something totally cutting edge or something that's you know, used by everyone. So the diversity of options and room for innovation at the same time means this is just the beginning. And, and also, projects are coming together too. You're starting yes. to see formation. You're starting to see some de facto alignment. Yes. You're starting to see the, some visibility into how the big moves are being playing out, almost the, the harvesting of that hard work. Yes, I, I do think there is consolidation, um, but I would definitely say that there's consolidation and innovation. Yep. And that is something you, I genuinely have not seen this before. Um, I think we, there are definitely areas we're all really focusing on. I talked a lot about security in my keynote because it continues to gain importance in cloud native, whether that is through projects or through practices. Um, the same, I did not mention this in my keynote, but around like, you know, continuous delivery, generally the software delivery cycle, there's a lot coming together happening there. Uh, and, and you know, yeah. many other spaces, so absolutely right. Let's dig in a little bit actually, because I'm curious, you, you get to see these 140 plus projects. Yes. What are some of the other trends that you're seeing, especially now as we're feeling this momentum around Kubernetes, the excitement is back in the ecosystem? Yes, so, so much happening, but I would definitely say that like the underlying basis of all these projects, right? I brought that up, brought that up in my keynote is the maintainers, and I think mm. the maintainer mm -hmm. group is the talent keeps thriving and growing. The, the load on them is very heavy, though, mm -hmm. and I do think yeah. there's a lot more we all company the companies around us need to do to support these people because the innovation they are bringing is unprecedented. Uh, besides Kubernetes, which has its own cool stuff all the time, I think I'm particularly excited about the Argo projects. Yeah. So they're the quadruplets, as I like to call <laughs> them, right? Because there's four of them within the Argo banner. I had uh, Yuan from Argo on my uh, keynote, actually, oh, nice. uh, alongside Heba from 
Kubernetes, uh, and we talked about their maintainer journey. And it's interesting, totally different projects, same asks, we, you know, which is more support and time from employers, more ways to uh, build up contributors, and uh, ultimately, they love the CNCF marketing support. So that Argo nice. project's really a great umbrella. There are a lot of action going on, a lot of action going on. Arlon, I saw that, got some traction. A lot of great stuff. The question I, I want to ask you, and I want to get your reaction to this. You know, we always go to a lot of events with theCUBE, and you can always tell the vibrant of the ecosystem when you see developers doing stuff, projects yep. going on, but when you start seeing the commercialization, yes. the news briefings coming out of this show feels a lot like reInvent. Like, <laughs> it's like a tsunami. I've never seen this much news. Everyone's got a story, they're announcing products. There was products. a lot of news. That's there was a lot of flow, on. even from the CNCF. Yeah. What, what's your reaction to that? I mean, it's a tell sign of activity, certainly, right. and engagement. Right. But there's real proof coming out, real visibility into the value propositions yes. rendering itself with real products. What's your reaction to the news flow? Absolutely, I think it's market proof, like you said, right? Yeah. That we have awesome technologies that are useful to lots of people around the world. And I think that, I hope this continues to increase. And with the wide basket of project portfolios, that's what I hope to see. CNCF itself will continue supporting the maintainers with things like conformance programs, which are really essential when you are when you have people building products on top of your projects um, and other initiatives so that the technologi technological integrity remains solid while innovation keeps happening. I know from a little birdie, Brendan, good friend of mine, that you <laughs> had a board meeting today. Yes. And I am curious because, I hope I'm not going out of bounds on an assumption, I imagine that room is full of passionate people. Absolutely. CNCF board would be a wild one. <laughs> what are the priorities for the board between now and KubeCon next year? Sure, so the CNCF governing board is an over, uh, it's like an oversight body, and their focus is on working with us on the executive team to make sure that we have the right game plan for the foundation. They tend to focus on the business decisions, things such as how do we manage our budget, how do we uh, deploy it, and what are the initiatives, and that's, that's always their priority. But because this is cloud native and we're all technologists who love our projects, we also engage closely with the technical oversight committee who was in the said meeting that we just talked about. And so lots of discussions are around project health, sustainability. How do we keep moving? Because as you said, Kubernetes is going mainstream, but it's still cool. There are all these other cool things. It's a lot going on. Right? Yeah, you got a lot of balls in the air. It's complex yes, decision so making many. and balancing of priorities. Yes. And demands. And <laughs> stakeholders, you have how many stakeholders? Every project, every person, every company? Everyone's a stakeholder. You're, you're yes. a key stakeholder well, too. And a hundred, I mean, I love how community focused you are. Obviously we're here to talk about the community. You have contributors from 187 different countries. It's one of the things I'm the most proud of. It's, yeah, it, it gives me all the feels as a community builder as well. Yeah. What, what an accomplishment. And supporting community members in those different environments must be so dynamic for you and the team. Absolutely, and it, it, beho it behooves us to think globally in how we solve problems. Even when we introduce programs, my first question is, are we by accident being, let's say, default US, or are we being default Europe, whatever it may be, because we really got to think about the whole world. It's global culture, it's a global yeah. village. Yes. And I think global now more than ever is so important, and, and, and the Ukraine yes. uh, it, discussion on the main stage was awesome. I love how you guys did that. Because this you. is impacting the technology. We need the diverse input. Now, I made a comment yesterday that it's going to make, it might slow things down. I meant, as there's more diversity, there's more conversations. Yes. But once people get aligned and committed, that's where the magic happens. Share your thoughts on the global diversity, why it's important, how things are made, how decisions are made. What's the philosophy? Because there's more to, to, to get your arms around. Yes, It absolutely. may seem harder or slower or whatever, but once it gets done, aligned and committed, the yes. product's better, everything's better. Yes, absolutely. I think the more people involved, the better it is for sure. Especially from a robustness, resilience perspective. Because you know, as they say, um, uh, sunlight makes bugs shallow. That's because the more yeah. pe more eyes on something, the faster people will solve uh, problems, fix bugs, and make uh, you know look for security vulnerabilities, solve all that. So especially in those areas, I think where you want to be more resilient, 
the more of the people, the better it is, 100%. And then when it comes to direct technical direction and choosing a path, I think that's, that's where, you know, it's the role of the maintainers. And as I was saying, there's only a thousand odd maintainers for 140 plus projects, right? So they are catering. Wow, they have a lot of responsibility. Right? Serious it's amount of responsibility. It's crazy, yeah. I know. And we have to do everything we can for those people because they are the ones who set the vision, set the direction, um, and then 176,000 plus contributors follow their lead. So we have, I think the right mechanisms of contribution and collaboration in a global way are in place, and we keep chugging along and doing better and better each year. What's next for you guys? You got, you got the EU show coming Correct. out. Amsterdam. The economy looking. I don't see a recession for technology, but that's me, I'm bullish on tech. Yeah, there's some layoffs going on, some cleaning up, overinflated expectations on valuations right. of startups, but I don't see this stopping well, or slowing down, but what's your take? Yeah, I mean, as I said in my keynote, right, open source usage soars in times of turmoil, and financial turmoil is one example of that. So we, uh, we are expecting growth and heavy growth this year, next year, and onwards. In, and in fact, going back to the whole uh, maintainer journey, now is a time there's even more pressure on them. And companies, as they manage their uh, you know, workforces and prioritization, they really need to remember, they're building products off of open source. They are, this is, open source is on which what their business relies, whether they're a vendor or end user. Yeah. And give maintainers the space, time, to work on what they need to work on. Yeah, they need a little work-life balance. I mean, the self-care there, I, I can't even imagine the complexity of the decision matrix in their mind. Speaking of that, and uh, obviously, you culture must be a huge part of how you lead these teams. How do you approach that as a leader? I think the number one, so the foundation is a very small set of staff, just so you know. I was curious, actually, let's tell the audience, how many people are on the team? Uh, you know, it's actually a difficult question because we have folks who like spin up and down and we have uh, matrix support from the Linux Foundation, but about 30 people in total are dedicated to CNCF at wow. any given time. But compared, Y'all do yes. hard work, yeah. you're doing great. It's I'm a flat impressed. organization. It, yeah. It's pretty flat. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it's actually, in some ways, very similar to the uh, projects and their, the, you know, contribution communities there, where it's like everyone kind of like steps up and does what needs to be done, which is wonderful and beautiful. Yeah. But with the responsibility on our shoulders, it's definitely a yeah. balancing act. So first off, it is I ask everyone to have some grace for the staff. They are in a startup land with no IPO on the other yeah. side of the rainbow. <laughs> They're doing it because they love, love, love this community and technology yeah. so much. Yeah, and then also they're they're acknowledging that nobody in open source wants to see a bureaucracy. Right. I mean, everyone right. wants to see lean, efficient. A, uh, yeah, absolutely, yes. John, it's great. It's a, it's a great point and, and I think that uh, it's just, it's amazing what passionate people can do if yes. given, given the opportunity. Let's talk a little bit about the literal event that we're at right now. Yes. Theme today, building for the road ahead. Yes. What was the inspiration for that? Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> we're in Detroit. People drive here. In <laughs> case you Motown. didn't know, cars have been made in the city. It's kind of, yes. it's everywhere yeah. being here in the city, but which you know, is awesome. It did, it, there was of course a geographical element, but it also aligns with what, where we're at, right? We're building yeah. for the road ahead, which frankly, given the changes going on in the world, is a bumpy road. So it's important to talk about it, and that's what the theme was. And how many folks have shown up? This is a totally different energy from Los Angeles right? last year. I'm sure we can both agree. Everyone was excited last year, but this is an order of magnitude. Yes. How many folks do you think are milling around? Yeah, it's much more than double of Los Angeles. We are close to 8,000. That's and amazing. It's so, you're absolutely right. The energy is just way up. It's so good. People are enjoying themselves. It's, it's been lovely. Yeah. That's great, so you're, you're feeling good, you're riding the high. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I'm a little bit of a zombie right now. <laughs> you don't look it, we wouldn't it. know. Nobody knows, they don't know. Hey, if you want to take a break, we got 12 <laughs> interviews tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. On board. You co-host with us, we'd love to have you. Yeah, exactly, you're you know. welcome anytime. You're welcome anytime, <laughs> Priyanka. Well, thank you. But no, it's been such a wonderful show, and you folks are part of the reason. Just yeah. everybody here yeah. is contributing to the awesomeness. Yeah. You're part of it. Yeah. Look at your smiley yeah. faces. And Lisa Martin's right. over there. Don't Lisa's over there. Yes. Say hi to Lisa yeah. And team. <laughs> yes, the team Guys, is awesome. This, thank you for One. thank you for your support for the Cube. We really oh, appreciate yeah. it. We enjoy it a lot, and we love the community. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your support for Cloud Native.
Thank you. One last thing I just want to point out, because it's not always it happens in this industry, the women outnumber the men on this stage right now. I'm proud of and that. And I know that diversity and inclusion is a priority for CNCF. Top priority. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, it is something at the forefront of my mind, no matter what we do, and mm -hmm. it's because I have such great role models. You know, when I was just a participant in the ecosystem, uh, Dan Kahn was leading the foundation, and he took it so seriously to always try to uplift people from a diverse backgrounds and bring their, those faces into yes. Cloud Native. And he made a serious lasting yes. impact. And I am not going to let that go to waste. It's not going to be me who yeah. drops the ball. <laughs> We're behind you all the way. <laughs> right? I mean, we yes. see improvement over we the years. I mean, even from an attendance perspective, yes. on stage I feel like you've done just an outstanding job Thank with the you. curation and representation. I don't say that lightly. It really matters yeah. to me. But even in the audience, looking around, it's so refreshing. Even it sounds silly, the shirts are more fitted. There's, there's, it's not silly. There's, it's there's different types of shirts. And I mean, you know how it is. We've been in this it's industry long enough. <laughs> exactly, and 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 that's the whole point. I, I absolutely <laughs> love it. Have we announced a location for KubeCon North America 2023 yet? It's Chicago. Exciting! Yes. All right, so we'll be seeing you. Midwest. Not far this away. is the first time I've said this publicly. I just realized it's Chicago. The scoop. People. I won! <laughs> oh, I feel so lucky we got to break the scoop. I was I was I was learning from John's right. lead there, right. and I'm um, very the excited. Amsterdam, Chicago. It's yes. going to be absolutely right. we'll fantastic. Now. Yes, do smart move. Everybody yeah, right. Especially to after it. Detroit. It's actually not a it's not a bad move. Priyanka, is there anything else you'd like to say to folks? Maybe they're thinking about coming or contributing to the ecosystem. Yes. Anyone and everyone can and should contribute and join us. Um, the maintainers are holding us all up. Let's rally to support them. We have more and more programs to do that. As you know, we did Contrib Fest here this yeah. week, which yeah. was the first time. So we will help you get involved. So you're not on your own. So that's my number one message, which is, Anyone and everyone, you're welcome here. We'll make sure you have a good time. So just come. Okay, please do. It. I can I can tell you that Priyanka is not blowing smoke. <laughs> I, I feel very welcome here. This community yep. has welcomed me as a non-technical. So I, I I think you're absolutely preaching the truth. Priyanka, thank you so much for being here with us today on the show, for helping herd the cats and wrangle the brilliant minds that make CNCF possible, and honestly, for just bringing your energy and joy to, to the entire experience. John, thank you for hanging out with me. I'm glad I could contribute in a small way to the I was going to say, I was going to say thank you for founding theCUBE <laughs> so that we could be here yes. in this little marriage and collaboration uh, yes. to be possible. And thank all thank of you, you for tuning in to theCUBE here live from Detroit, Michigan. My name is Savannah Peterson. I am thrilled to be sharing this content with you today and I hope to see you for the rest of our interviews this afternoon. <laughs>